Hey upper grade rockets, this video is for third, fourth, and fifth grade Rosa Parks Elementary art students. All of these activities are totally optional by choice. None of them are required. You don't have to turn them in. They are just for my friends who are missing the enrichment and joy of Rosa Parks art class. Today we are going to try to draw a 3D house in the snow. And it can be casting shadows. So that's two really cool skills that help uh, show depth of space in a work of art. Here's a previous example from a, I believe this was a third grader I had last year. And while he didn't complete all of the areas of the background that I would have liked, the house looks nice. He cast his shadow on the ground and I approve of the coloring. He did some interesting purple mountains and made it nighttime. Uh, so it must be a strong moon casting a shadow from Aaron Perez. Here is the outline of our steps for today. The, the beginning part is going to be focusing on making the house 3D, where we draw the side first, and then add the roof lines and the baseline of the house, and then the most important part there is going to be to match the diagonal line at the edge of the roof over here. And then down here, when it comes to casting shadows, you just want to sort of repeat what you've drawn before and slant it. No big deal. But you want them all going the same direction based on wherever the light is. Uh, I usually go down and to the left. I don't know why, maybe because I'm left-handed, uh, but that's, that's what I do. And if you find it hard to uh, draw the same thing but upside down, life hack, just turn your paper around and draw it again. Anyway, let's get started. You are ready to start as soon as you have something to draw with and a piece of paper. Feel free to pause at any time. I'm going to get started in five. Four, three, two, and one. Awesome. Okay, buddy, so let's start that house. I want to leave a lot of extra space because I like drawing other stuff. I don't just want this to be like one giant house. And if you're looking for something fun, you could always turn this into a gingerbread house when you're done by adding lots of candy and icing. But for now, I'm just going to draw uh, like the basic shape that little kids draw when they're drawing a house but we'll make it more elaborate here in a minute. So that means uh, I'm making a peak here and connecting it in a box shape down here. And we can always put windows and stuff on later. Uh, for the next important step, I'm going to be drawing a horizontal line from the top of the roof over some distance. From the base of the roof, also horizontally to the right, for some distance and then the what's going to be the bottom of the house I'm just going to move that across there a little bit and like i said the most important part to keep it looking 3d is that this part stays vertical but this part goes diagonal and it has to match this diagonal line here it can't go in a different direction it's got to go uh, down and to the left for our purposes so i'm going to go down and to the left and it's okay if that's longer than the line. I just bring the line out to meet it. That looks a little sloppy, so I'm going to do some Miss Haas editing real quick. Oh, look, now the house has gutters. Lovely. Okay, next I'm going to make a vertical line to connect the roof to the ground of the house. And now it's house. I'm going to add all kinds of fun details. I'm going to go ahead and put a gutter all the way around my roof because I'm a completionist. Okay. Now, window time. Here are some fun windows. Here's a fun door. More windows, more windows. Obviously, your house can be different. But that's how I'm going to do it for now. Oh, need a doorknob. That would help. And how about a chimney? So now, I'm going to make the ground of this house. Technically, if this house were 3D, the back of the house would be going in some different directions too. But I am just going to cover all that up with a fluffy blanket of snow by making a wavy line here that hides the extra angles of the house in 3D that I did not draw. It's a trick. And I've got all this space to play with. I could add a sidewalk or a driveway, um, start putting up some decorations or the gingerbread houseification that I mentioned earlier. Uh, I could add a fence or a pond or just all kinds of stuff down here 
And then up here, the sky in the background is up to me. Great camera! Are you there? Whew. Gosh, that was close. Okay, so some trees. Just some quick trees, triangle trees. Here's a bear tree. That means a tree with no leaves, not a tree that is B-E-A-R. Bear, like a roaring, fuzzy thing. And just snapping off some Y branches here. Whatever, whatever. And then when I'm doing the shadow part, everything's going to go the other way. And what else would I like? Oh, a snowman. That would be fun. And put a snowman over here. Shadow of the snowman. And so on and so forth. For the background, use your imagination. I believe in you. Uh, you could also make this a uh, house at the North Pole if you're interested in uh, doing some holiday art. Uh, otherwise, it's just kind of a nice snowy landscape for us to play with. When you're coloring shadows on snow, they can be gray, black, or light blue if you want. It's really up to you. And the first and second graders today are experimenting with drawing footprints in the snow. So if you want to add some more visual interest, you can always make it look like somebody's been here by adding some footprints. And if you are a cat-obsessed artist, I know I have a few of those, you can always make those paw prints instead. Anyway, what you do is up to you. Totally optional. Feel free to send me some pictures, and I am going to leave this video with those initial directions up just in case you want to try again. Maybe the first one doesn't turn out so hot. That's okay. It's all about practice, and I hope you enjoy the drawing. I will see you next week. Bye, buddies.